Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Another battery torn apart, another set of surprises. And the thing is with these batteries, a lot of times they change within a few months. Some YouTubers reviewed this battery several months ago and found this battery had low temp protection. And some channels have reviewed it recently and found it does not have low temp protection. So all these batteries, you have to tear them apart and inspect them every so often to make sure the manufacturers are staying true to their word. So today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna test capacity on it and uh, tear into it and see if it's got its claim low temp protection as the ads show. So this is a cycling bat 12 volt mini lithium iron phosphate. You see it's a true true form mini. It is tiny, 100 amp hour capacity in this little 20 pound package. Uh, right now it's on sale for $164.99. That's crazy and it's supposed to have low temp protection. I've been using it in some tests. You know, just I cycle all these batteries 10, 15, 20 times before I actually do a pull on them. So I'm gonna put it on the test rig today, check it out and see what it's made of. As you can see, the battery is fully charged now. So we're at full capacity, so now time to pull it back down. A little inverter pre-charge action. Hold it till the light goes out. There we go, power on the inverter. And what is it drawing? Wow, 3.7 watts, that always amazes me. Before I start the test, you can see the fully charged cycling bat, power leads, no, no hidden wires anywhere. Going to my little energy meter, little breaker right there. Uh, no, nothing hidden, no funny business to the alpha inverter. So time to put the load to it. All right, here goes the load to the cycling bat for the capacity test. There we go, plugged in. So yeah, it's not a 0.2C or nothing like that. I'm just hitting it real life. So 470 some odd watt load, pulling 30, almost 35 amps right now. So I'll be back with you in a little while and see what it's made of. All right, it's about to roll over 1,280 watt hours or 100 amp hours. We'll have our money's worth right there, 1,280. Still pulling, uh, I pulled it hard, between 35 and 40 amps the whole time during this test, so it's held up well. So I'll keep on pulling, see what the total is. All right, the inverter just shut off. 1,318 watt hours out of the little cycling bat mini. Wow, very impressed. Now time to tear this battery apart, see if it's got that low temp protection that they're claiming. So that'd be pretty cool if we got a mini, an affordable mini, with low temp protection and good capacity like it had. So hopefully the build quality is good. So I'll crack it open, we're gonna find out. The battery's at a point now where I should be able to crack the lid on it so we can look at it at the same time together. All right, there it went, it came off. Let's see, first thing, first thing I see. Looks like we've got two number eights on the negative. Spin you around here. Looks like, yes, a number six 200 degree jacket on the positive lead. Everything's tight. Try the right crimps on there. Uh, everything on the BMS looks tight. Looks like a very similar BMS to uh, many other brands out there. Move this cover and we'll go down a little further and check out some more. And one quick note before I go further, they're claiming 120 amp BMS. They're actually giving you a 150 amp BMS. So that's pretty nice. So that was really fun. That's probably the worst one ever to try to get into. Very good build quality. Uh, the whole battery sitting like a mortar bed of this sealant down here where there's no room around this case there was no prying it out so i had to saw the saw the case apart to get it out but hey that's all right i want to check everything out make sure y'all are getting a good deal on this battery make sure it is as it's claimed even the epoxy board has sealant down to the bus bars on the cell packs finally down into it where i can get to the uh low temp sensor and all that good stuff so there it is right there the uh ntc thermistor Glued down right in the center of the cell pack, right where it should be. Look at the nice laser welds on these bus bars. Very, very nice weld job. Very thick bus bars down through there. The balance leads on this one are spot welded. So there, the balance leads are actually welded to the bus bars. Connections look good there. So no issues that I can see with that. Uh, I've got this nice wire loom around everything to protect all the wires. Get you a little close up of the cells here. Appears to be Eve cells, which is good. Here's the test data on the cells right there in the test dates, uh, 105, 
1,711 milliamps on that one, 105,799. Try to get you another shot of this one over here. 105,723. So, you know, they picked a good set of cells that I'll test it close in this. You know, pulling over 102 the way I was testing it is really pretty good considering these tested at 105 at their rate, which is a very low discharge rate. So I'm very pleased with this capacitive performance. So now let's check this low temp protection, see if it actually works. One more note on here, you can see the cell separators. They got fish paper between the cells right there. So there is a cell separator material. Uh, the cell pack is super duper fiber taped together, which as tight as that casing was, it wouldn't have mattered if they weren't taped. It was wedged in there. So yeah, very good, very good so far. I was gonna show you one more thing on this BMS too. It does have a high temp thermal switch protection for the BMS. So that's good to see. Nice thick heat sinks, very thick on this one. So very good quality built battery. Check for high temp on this sensor while it's apart. I'll heat it up and see if it drops out over here on the charger. 20 seconds, perfect. Cools off, comes right back to charging. Let's check for low temp protection. I'm gonna put the ice pack right here on the sensor. Watch the charger. If it's got low temp protection, it should drop out. Using my colder than ice ice pack as always. All right, that's been five minutes buried in that ice pack right there and it didn't trigger. So let me try something a little colder. That's unfortunate. I was hoping it would trigger quick with ice. Well, since the ice pack did not trigger this low temp protection, I got my low temp activator right here. So we'll try it again with something a little colder than ice. See if that does it. Nothing, try it again. Maybe third time's a charm. All right, try it one more time. That's a lot colder than 32 degrees. Look at that ice forming right there around the thermal sensor. Not cutting out. So I don't think we have functioning low temp protection. I'll do it one more time just for posterity. So this is four times it's not doing it. All right, that's a lot of, a lot of cold sitting on there. And it's not triggering, so we don't have functioning low temp protection. So this one fails its test, unfortunately. Such a sad turn of events for this battery. I had high hopes for this unit. It had tested well before I actually hooked instrumentation to it. Did everything I asked it to do. But, same with any other battery, with objective testing. If it does not have what the manufacturer claims it has, which in this case it's low temp cutoff it's not there so it's an automatic fail and i hate that so bad for this one because you get a bigger bms than what they claim but the low temp protection does not work that was multiple multiple times in sub zero fahrenheit conditions on the sensor and it did not shut off the charging ah oh, like i said that's that's terrible i hate that because otherwise you know this would have been a great battery and if you're not needing low temp protection, it still is a great battery. But for my testing, it's a fail, unfortunately. So thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Be safe out there.